Welcome to this new video. Today we are going to look at useful things that we can do in Comfy UI. We're going to look at text to image generation, Laura's image to image generation, control nets, image prompts, upscaling, in painting, and a little bit more. If you want to go in depth with Comfy UI from scratch, check out my new course called Comfy UI Fundamentals. This new course includes six hours of video lessons. More details at pixelfudger.com, link in the description. All right, let's get started with the super basics text to image generation. So let's give it a try. Here I have a basic text to image workflow and I want to see a cute puppy riding a skateboard on a boardwalk at the beach at sunset. So let's try that. Let's run this workflow. Here we go. In just a few seconds, I have generated an image locally on my own computer. No subscriptions or online connection required. Maybe you're more of a cat person. No problem. We can change the text prompt if we change the word uh, puppy for kitten and run the workflow again. Now we have a kitten riding on the skateboard. Maybe you hate the beach and you don't like cats, no problem. Instead, we could do a cute white bunny. And instead of the boardwalk at the beach, we could do winter and snow. Let's run the workflow again. And now we have a bunny riding the skateboard in winter in the snow. And we can generate infinite variations of this prompt by changing our random seed. So if we change our seed, we can generate a new image. And now we have a different bunny riding on a skateboard and so on. If I change the seed again, I can generate variations. Actually, when I'm thinking about it, a skateboard in the snow doesn't really make sense. So let's change the skateboard for a snowmobile and run the workflow again. <laughs> and now we have a big bunny riding a snowmobile in the snow. So obviously playing with text to image can be a lot of fun, but it can be useful too. Let's have a look at a different example. And here I can generate a new frame. So here I have a new image generated with a new text prompt and you can imagine this type of image being used in a mood board as a reference image to communicate ideas with a visual effects team. You could also remove the car from this by changing the text prompt. And just like the bunny or the puppy on the skateboard, we can create infinite variations of this scene by changing our seed. So if I change the seed and regenerate the image. I can create variations of this scene. As you can imagine, text to image generation can be very useful. So let's have a look at different ways we can control our image generation. First, let's have a look at LoRa models. LoRa's are add-on models that add extra functionality to an existing image generation model. For example, if I try to generate a cloud that looks like a dragon with my current model. Right now this is failing because my image generation model doesn't know how to render that specific type of image, but we can fix that problem by enabling a LoRa model that has been trained on images of clouds. So if we enable the LoRa and run the workflow again, now we have our cloud that looks like a dragon. And obviously we can change the text prompt. So if we change dragon for unicorn and run the workflow again, now we have our cloud that looks like a unicorn. And obviously we're not limited to animals. If I uh, try to do a cloud that looks like a world map, now I have clouds that look like a world map. As you can see, LoRa models are a great way to fine tune the results of our diffusion models. Hundreds of LoRa's are available online. Another method we can use to control image generation is called image to image. So let's take a look. First, let's run our workflow without using our reference image. 
So here I'm generating an image of a Barbie doll, but it's not really using my reference image uh, very much. But I can adjust that. So if I lower my denoise value here and I run the workflow again, now I can see that the Barbie doll is starting to match what is happening in my reference image. And if I want my generation to match even closer to my reference image, I just have to adjust my denoise value here and run the workflow again. And now I can see that my generated image is really matching what's happening in my source image. So this is pretty cool, but I think what's even cooler is to do the opposite. So let's have a look at that. So let's run the workflow. And here I'm generating the portrait of a woman that is based on the photo of the Barbie doll. So as you can imagine, image to image is a very powerful way to guide your image generation beyond simple text prompts. And if we want to get even more control over our image generation, then we can use another method called ControlNet. ControlNet uses special control images to guide the image generation process. There are many types of control images, scribble, sketch, depth, canny edge, and open pose, and a few others. We're going to have a look right now at the depth control net. So let's have a look at that. Here I have a photo that I took with my phone. This is a very rough photo of a toy robot and a few boxes that I took in my living room. And we're using a special depth estimation model to generate a depth map of that photo. And then we're going to use that depth map to guide our image generation. So let's try that. Let's run the workflow. As you can see, the image is driven by the text prompt, but the layout of the scene is driven by the depth control net. As usual, we can create as many variations as we want. We just need to change the random seed. So if I change the seed and run the workflow again, I will get a new image. And once more, if I change the seed again, I can generate as many variations as I want. I think this is a very cool way to generate concept frames. You can take pictures of everyday items like toys and boxes and guide your image generation with them. Right now, we're using the depth estimation to generate our depth map, but the depth map could be coming from anywhere. For example, here I have the depth pass of a chessboard that was rendered from a 3D scene in Blender. So let's use that depth pass to guide our image generation. So with just a few keywords in my text prompt and a depth pass, I was able to generate a pretty slick image. So let's change the keywords in our text prompt. And just like that, in a few seconds, we have a completely different render. Once more, if I use a different text prompt and change that, we can get another variation. So obviously this can be a great tool for brainstorming and bashing out look dev frames and so on. But what if we only want to copy the style of an image instead of copying the layout and framing of the image? For that, we can use image prompts. So in this example, I'm going to use this photo of a pink CD player as my image prompt, and that will drive the style of my generation. In this case, I want to generate a robot. So let's try that. Let's run the workflow. And here we can see our robot has inherited the materials and the style of the pink CD player. If I want to change the style of my robot, I can change my image prompt. So I'm going to replace the image with a different image of a yellow CD player, and let's run the workflow again. And now we can see that the materials of the robot are now matching the style of the yellow CD player. Next, let's look at something perhaps a bit less flashy, but still very useful, upscaling. Here I have an upscale workflow, and I want to upscale this tiny image of 640 by 382 to 5K. So let's run the workflow. Here we can compare our result to the original 
and the results are pretty shocking. If we zoom in a little bit, we can see that the difference in detail is pretty amazing. This is because Comfy UI is essentially generating a new mountain that is based on our low resolution image. This can be very useful for matte painting. For example, if you have a stock photo that has exactly what you need, but not enough resolution to work with, then we can use Comfy UI to upscale that image. Another very useful technique is called in painting. Here I have this photo and I want to erase the man in the middle of the frame. For this, all I need is a rough mat of the man and a few keywords in my text prompt. So let's run the workflow. Here we go. And now the in painting model has rebuilt the fence, the scooters, the people on the scooters, the ground and everything behind the uh, man and we can have a perfect clean plate here so all we needed to achieve this was the photo an alpha of the guy and a few keywords in my text prompt usually you would use the keywords to describe what is happening behind the object you want to remove but we can also use the text prompt to generate more creative results so let's try a different example let's run the workflow And here I'm removing the scooter and the woman in the foreground and I'm replacing it with a giant frog. So in this case, the in painting model not only rebuilt the background objects like the kiosk and the street and so on, but it's also adding stuff from my text prompt. In this case, a giant frog. If I change my text prompt from giant frog to giant soap bubble and regenerate the image. Now I have a giant soap bubble instead of the frog. Let's try with another image. So this is pretty nuts. So this is the before image and this is the after image. So the in painting model recreated the hair, the background wall, the foreheads, the ear, all the details. Almost half of the lady's head has been recreated by the in paint model. As you can imagine, in-painting workflows can be extremely useful for photo retouching or to create clean plates for visual effects. Since Comfy UI is a node-based interface, it can become really powerful when you start to mix and match various techniques. For example, here is a more complex workflow that combines text prompts, image prompts, two different control nets, image to image, and image sequence processing. This particular workflow comes from my new Comfy UI Fundamentals course. To learn how to build this workflow from scratch and a lot more, check out the course at pixelfudger.com. This concludes our quick overview of Comfy UI. Hope you have enjoyed the tour. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.